there has been so much progress recently for female founders and women in STEM, but of course there needs to be more advocacy, more um, support for women founders, and you know, growing that network is so important. What we do is we leverage what the immune system is recognizing. So we want to identify what your immune system finds important in a number of different diseases, whether that's cancer or autoimmune related. We are really excited and a bunch of other people are very excited about using the immune system to identify what it recognizes in a number of diseases. And once we figure that out, we'll be able to target cancer, different autoimmune diseases, allergies, so much better. Just having an ability to identify specifically what is important in a disease context will really bring about the next generation of therapies. One thing that really sticks out are the number of mentors that I've had. I think that throughout my career at Johns Hopkins, where I did my undergraduate degree, I had um, a number of really amazing women professors who encouraged me to pursue science um, as, as a profession. Being an entrepreneur, I mean, it's very similar in some ways to being the head of your own lab. It's, there's a lot of intellectual freedom and hopefully if people uh, believe in what you can accomplish, you can do that. But the, I think the support around you and the support of being an entrepreneur is, um, is really unique. And having um, people around you uh, and working as a team instead of as an individual doing an academic project is, uh, is very rewarding.